All right, let's take a look at number 11, making decisions. We'll open this in Xcode. Everything we've done so far that has run in a playground, it goes from the first line to the last in order. So whatever it does, it's always going to do the same thing. Now, for example, if I have this video length equals 3, video length 2 short reaction, if I blinked, I'd miss it. Video reasonable length reaction, that was lovely. Video message, your video is your video length seconds long, and then video length 2 short reaction. So this code, if I run it, every time it runs, it's going to be the same regardless. Every single time, it'll always be this answer. Well, if you say number three, hey, your video is three seconds long, if I blinked, I'd miss it, that works. But if we change the video length to something really big, like whatever that is, then the video message wouldn't look right. Your video is a million seconds long, if I blinked, I'd miss it. So we want our code to behave and do something different based on the answer. So we need to make decisions. All right, let's learn how to do that. Click Next. In this game, 20 questions, you can figure anything out by just asking questions with yes or no. So we can write code that can be thought of as a question and Swift will tell you if the answer is true or false. And we can see here if you, in fact, true and false are special values. So notice how it resolves true, false. So you can then assign them. You can say let yes equals true. And notice how it says true, no equals false. And so values true and false, these are called Booleans after some guy named George. Great. So a bool is a type in Swift to represent Booleans. So the only possible bool values are true and false. For example, in this code here, if I uncomment this, there's no answer. It it's throws an error because it doesn't understand what that means. So if true or false, how do you ask the questions? All right, let's check out equality. We've talked about true and false. With, uh, so with bools, the question is, how do you ask the question in code? One way is to make a comparison statement. So a comparison, a comparison statement says this has a relationship to that. And so parts one and three are values like a number or a string. And two is it's called a comparison operator. So we say one compared to or is equal to two. The question is false. So the double equals checks if both sides are equal. And in this case, they are not. Uh, remember, you can't use a single equals sign because that's used for assigning a value. So you have to use the double equals in order to ask the question is equal to. Now you can even do things like uh, evaluates numbers. So 10 is equal to 9 plus 1, and that is true. You can even reference it by constants, by referencing, you know, 100 is equal to 10 times 10, and that's true. All right, let's write some comparisons of our own. Uh, let's see, 24 is equal to 30 minus 6. And that's true. Perfect. Uh, what about strings? So we can say I Brent. Is that equal to I Brent? And it's true. What if I change it? What if I said I Brent? Is that equal to I Brent? Lowercase. Notice it's false because the string is not identical. All right, let's check out other ways to run comparisons. So we can use the comparison operator, but there are other ways to do things. For example, you can check less than. You can say 1 is less than 2, and that equals true. Uh, 2 is less than 2. Eh, nope, that's false. You can say more than. 1 is more than 2. Uh, nope. How about 3 is more than 2? Yep, that's true. 
some comparisons you can actually use two symbols for example this is the not equals comparison operator so I can say one is not equal to two and that equals true or I can say two is not equal to two and that's false because they are equal then we have less than or equal to so for example two is less than or equal to two and that's true and the reason that's true is because it says less than or equal right one is less than or equal to two and that is true because one is less than two but of course three is not less than or equal to two that would be false you can do the same for more than awesome and of course if you're having trouble remembering which uh, the more than or less than sign think of it as a greedy mouth always eating the bigger value check that out all right let's write some comparisons of our own and what happens if we try to compare non-integer types like doubles or strings? So, for example, we could say uh, is 20 less than or equal to 10 plus 10? And that is going to resolve to true. All right, let's look at strings. Can we say I, Brent is less than or equal to I Brent. See what that does. It's true because I'm equal or not less than. Okay, what about doubles? Let's try some doubles. Uh, is 20 less than or equal to 20? Ooh, it resolved it. It's true. Interesting. Learn how to add decision points to your code. All right, let's check out conditionals. So, so far we talked about true or false, uh, but then the question is, how do you get your code to do something different based on the result? So we've talked about this video, reactions to length of video. Now let's implement some code. So it says, if the duration is shorter than five, say it was too short. If the duration is greater than or equal to five, say it was very nice. So it's very, it's, this is similar. So we say, if video length is three, we say video length is less than five, then we show this message. If video length is greater or equal to five, we say that's lovely. So that is called an if statement. It works like this, says if some code that could be true or false is true, run the code inside the braces. Otherwise, skip it. So you can see which code it ran, which is the first one. Now let's change the value and see how it affects it. All right, we're going to change this. Let's change this to five and see what happens. Hey, there it goes. It asks the question, if video length is less than five, it didn't display it. But it says if is greater or equal to, then we show this message. Very good. Now what if we change the comparison? So if it complains about videos shorter than 10 seconds, so let's say we change this to 10. Then notice how here this resolved. If I blinked, I'd miss it. And then that one also resolved to show that message. What if we change it to eight? Then it also resolves because it's less than 10. All right, now let's figure out how this works. Notice the problem because video length is less than 10 but it's greater than or equal to 5. Lovely and I blinked I missed it. That's not quite the message we want. Okay let's go to the next one. Else. So the message are very similar. Now it's easy to make mistakes because one is also they're both happening at the same time so what if you really want to say if the value is less than five do this otherwise do something else so you use an else keyword here we say if video length is less than five then we say this else say that's lovely and notice that it resolves only one message this is called the if else statement 
if some code could be true or false is true, then run the code, else run this other code in the second set of braces. So let's change the value of video length, confirm the same results are shown for the multiple if statements and the if else statement. So if we change this video length to eight, for example, then it still shows only the one. And if we change this to 10, then notice how if we change this one to 10, we say if it if I blinked, I'd miss it. So notice we have these if else. So only one message shows on the if else statement. All right, let's see if we can do one more. Else if. What if you wanted to show a different message if a video was too long? There's one last thing you can do with if and else. Here's what it looks like. We say if video length is less than five, we show this message. Else if video length is greater than 500, don't worry, I know a good editor. Very nice. Else, that was lovely. So this video length is 120, which is more than five, so it won't show that message. And it's not higher than 500, so it shows this message. Using else if lets you add another condition to it. And that will only happen if it's the first one is false. So let's change the video and, and see how it goes. Let's try 500. And it says that was lovely. Now, notice here, else if video length is greater than 500. And it wasn't. So now if we say 501, what happens? Don't worry, I know a good editor. See how that works? And you can even have more than one else if statement. But the first one that's true will be the one that wins. So we have let another video length, so 75,000. So here it's not less than five, so it doesn't show it. If another video length is greater than 50,000, then we say this is too long for anyone. Else, if it's greater than 500, don't worry. All right, very good. So notice again, only one of these else if resolves to true. Now let's go on to functions and decisions. So you can use conditionals to write more useful functions. Uh, if you need to make uh, some decisions, for example, if you have a five-person band playing a gig, we got 600 pounds of equipment, you and your bandmates each can carry 50 pounds of gear. But if anyone has to make more than two trips, they'll quit. So you do some arithmetic. The band member, the gear weight, weight per person, maximum trip count. If gear weight is less than band member count times weight per person times maximum trip count, Rock on, else everyone quits. Look like you got a solo show. <laughs> so this gives you an answer, but it's not it's not clear what's happening. So we really need to rewrite this so that it makes it easier. So this function could help describe a band carry gear. This kind of helps it hides the complexity, but um, Something that returns a boolean can be useful directly in an if in an if statement like this. If band can carry gear, then rock on. Now we can we understand what the code is doing because we've broken it into a function, and the function name tells us a little bit more about what this means. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Remainder. All right, the band hired an extra member, uh, but now there's more trouble. They insist on a bowl of candy in the dressing room every night. If it doesn't divide exactly between all of them, they'll quit. Goodness. You can use the remainder operator to find out if one number divides evenly into a number. The remainder is the percent sign, gives the remainder of a division. So four divided by two is two with no remainder. So this line equals zero. So four remainder two. And notice over here, it shows as zero. Five divided by two is two with remainder of one, so this line equals one. 
So to find out if the candy e can be evenly split, then we say candy remainder band member count is equal to zero, then we say rock on. Else everyone quits, this is unacceptable. So it says this, the percent sign and the double equals kind of distracts what the question is. So we can make this a little clearer in a function. We could say, is candy amount acceptable? Pass in band member count, candy count, and then that returns whether it's true or false. As the previous example, this line hides the complexity. Um, and then you can write the function, if this, if candy amount is acceptable, then we rock on, otherwise everyone quits. Now this percent sign, it's often called the mod, mod, modulo, <laughs> the modulus, it's the modulo operator. So let's figure out what we've talked about so far. We want to make decisions and choose which code to run based on the decisions we add with their code. So decisions can be made by comparison, either true or false, and you can run parts based on if and else. For example, we say you want to practice equals true. If you want to practice, go to the exercises. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.